What's up, David Moss Jr. here, and in this video, we're gonna be doing a full review of the Energize Inflatable Portable Cold Plunge. And I must say, right out of the box, there's some really notable features I can't wait to get into, so let's go ahead and jump right in. So first, let's talk about what you get with your purchase, and I'll have links down in the description below if you wanna check that out. Right now, Energize has a sale going on where you can purchase everything you see here for under $4,000, and that is subject to change. You do get the plunge itself, you get a pump to pump it up and deflate it, you get your plumbing tubes you'll need to connect to the chiller, a backpack that everything can fit into if you wanna take it with you, your inflatable lid, and then you get the chiller, and the chiller is a lot smaller than I'm used to, most of them are much bigger than this, and it's on wheels, so it's very easy to move around and portable, and it's not very heavy for a powerful chiller. It is 0.8 horsepower, which means it's gonna be able to chill that water down really, really cold. And it does come with a nice filter and your initial sanitization kit. Let's put, now let's put it together. So it's important to figure out exactly where you're gonna want it because once you have this thing in place and filled with water, it's gonna be there until you drain it. it comes with straps to hold everything together. It also comes with this little patch kit. But when you get this patch kit, it's pretty important if you do happen to get a puncture, which you shouldn't because they're pretty durable it's nice to keep this somewhere handy so that you can repair it very easily yourself. Now, I live in Florida and we spend a lot of time on the lake. We've used those inflatable paddle boards a lot, so we're very familiar with these. Anyway, these are really easy to use. You're gonna attach it right here to where it says inflate, and when you wanna deflate your plunge, all you have to do is move this hose to this side, and it's gonna pull the air out really, really fast. These are usually dual action, so it pumps up really, really quick. They're saying you should be able to set this whole thing up in under 15 minutes, so we're gonna test that. And then to show you exactly how this whole thing works, the tip here, has almost like a little bit of a corkscrew. And you're gonna find this little triangle on both the lid and the tub itself. And it's gonna almost look like a little inlet there. If you press this tab down and there's air in it, that'll let air out, but it'll lock it back in place. If you press it and twist it, typically that locks it to where the air is just gonna come out when you're ready to deflate your plunge or your lid. So you're gonna wanna make sure you twist that to where it's sticking out. Take the tip there, twist it, lock it in place and then start pumping. And then once you have it fully inflated and you feel good about it, you just take this little tip and you line it up, twist it to the right, and that'll keep anything from accidentally hitting that, deflating your lid. So this is the lid. I feel like you could actually surf on this thing. It'd be a good bodyboard. There's a few things to note on the lid. You actually have handles, which it's not heavy, but it's nice to have these handles. And then on each of your straps, you actually have a child lock that you can set there to keep anybody from accidentally opening it if you don't want them to. I really wish I could virtually have you come teleport here and do this, because it's quite a workout. It's literally letting air out as I'm pumping, which is annoying. I can't even get it to the right PSI. You can hear the air just coming out. This pump sucks. Luckily, I've got a lot of different pumps. Energize. I know the founder, super cool guy. We gotta get better pumps. Either way, I've got it pumped up in three minutes. Now we've got it fully inflated, and before I set it up exactly where I want it and fill it up with water, plug it in and start getting the water cold, I wanna go ahead and measure it. I feel like when I measure these things and get into these cold plunges, it helps so many of you, but it also helps me to kind of identify who this cold plunge is gonna be for. I get a lot of questions on Instagram and private messages where people are asking me, this is my situation, this is how much I've got to spend, this is how big or small I am, what would you do? And I love to be able to have an arsenal of different options and recommendations to help you out. So if you have any questions privately and you wanna ask me specifically, specifically, go ahead and reach out to me on Instagram. I'll post my Instagram handle right here. It'll be dmossjr, D-M-A-U-S-J-R. Ask me anything, I got your back. Now let's go ahead and measure this thing. So fully inflated, I like to look at the width of the actual tub itself, which is actually just under 29 inches, which is kind of thin. And then the length looks like just under 51 inches, right at 51 inches. Now a couple things that I noted is that it's really tall. It's probably one of the taller inflatables that I've been in, that I've seen but it's also kind of narrow where your shoulders are gonna go. It's a little concern of mine, but we're gonna check it out once we get this thing full of water. And because it's padded and it is a little pliable, I don't think it's gonna be too big of a problem as long as you're not abnormally wide. But now let's go ahead and take a look at how deep it is. So from the floor to the top, you're looking right at 31 inches. Now this is also one of the only inflatable cold plunges that has a padded bottom. They all have a bottom, but it's usually just a very thin piece of this material. One thing to note, you're not gonna fill the water all the way up to the top. Matter of fact, there is a max indicator right here above the outlet where the water's gonna come back into the tub. And that's where you're gonna want your water. You see, when you get in, whether you weigh 100 pounds, 150, 200, 300 pounds, when you get in there, water is going to displace 
because you're taking up its space. So make sure that you fill it up to the max line and then get in it and then see where the water rises to. And then you can add a little bit of water or take a little bit of water away depending on your size. So that was the external dimensions. Let's talk about the internal dimensions. So at the widest point in the middle, you're just over 20 inches. And we're gonna see if that's a problem or not. The, the longest part, you're looking at 42, just around 43 inches, just under 43 inches long. So once again, it's a taller cold plunge tub, but it is a little bit narrower, which could actually be really good for those of you who live in an apartment, you have a small balcony with a small space. This, this is one of the smaller footprint inflatable cold plunges that I've seen. But more importantly, let's talk about this chiller. So the chiller is a 0.8 horsepower chiller and width wise, it's only 12 inches, it's pretty small. Lengthwise, it's just under 20 inches for the machine itself. Now you do have the filter across the back, so let's measure including that, 25 inches. So you got a 12 inch by 25 inch chiller. And from the floor to the top of the handle, you're looking just over 18 inches. So that's a really small footprint for a 0.8 horsepower chiller. They also do have the capability of adding a heater if that's something that you'd like. Now, the only reason I would ever recommend adding a heater is if you live somewhere where it's going to freeze and you're gonna keep this thing outside. See, a lot of times people ask me, hey, if I add a heater, can I use it as a hot tub at night and then make it a cold plunge in the morning? The answer to that is yes, you can. I recommend only worrying about getting the heater if you're gonna keep this thing outside and you wanna prevent the water from actually freezing in the really, really cold seasons. Oh, and I almost forgot the lid itself. So the lid, is the same size as the plunge, except it's about four inches. Yeah, about four inches of insulated air. So add an extra four inches to that height there, if that's something that's super important to you, which most people, it's really not. I like that it's insulated because that's gonna help fight away the heat from the sun. If you can't tell, it's hot out here today. It is currently 86 degrees outside, so it's a little hot. Now I gotta figure out where I wanna put this thing. That's a good idea. So I moved it down here on the dock because it just felt like a good thing to do. Just felt like the right place to put it. I wanna talk about a few things inside this tub. So a couple things that make this a little different from some of the other cold plunges in the inflatable space is that the connections going from the tub to the chiller are actually, it looks like stainless steel, which is cool for a lot of reasons, but also you gotta be careful. So I don't know if this is gonna happen. It's actually a really good question. So we went ahead and moved it down to the dock, just feels like a really cool place for it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything hooked up, show you how to hook it up, because I feel like sometimes people like to watch my videos and see the ease or the difficulty level in actually hooking up and setting up a cold plunge. But it's gonna be pretty easy. Once you have everything set, get your tub exactly where you want it, make sure that you have it pumped up and everything's good, there's no leaks. Have your chiller off to the side. There's a fan, if you can see on this side here. One side has a fan, the other side has no fan, but it does have some vents. The fan, you're probably not gonna wanna have facing your cold plunge. I like to have it on the opposite side, because typically that's where the exhaust, the hot air, is going to be blown out. But most of the time, where you see the fan is where the air is actually gonna be pushed out to keep all the components inside nice and cold. Now let's connect it. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the filters on the back side here. So, pretty simple enough. You're gonna take your 20 micron filter. These are great filters for filtering out hair, dirt, rocks, grass, debris. They're great in the sense that they keep your water clean. But I get a lot of questions from people all the time. If you're new to my channel, you probably don't know this, but I help a lot of people do DIY cold plunges and I review a lot of different cold plunges. On my DIYs, I've never used the micron filters. I always use the stainless steel mesh filters. And the reason is, is you have to clean them out at the same rate but you don't have to keep buying filters. So I just wanna throw that out there as to why anyone who always asks me those questions, I always give them that answer and they're like, really, that's a thing? So yeah, they filter out practically the same thing, but you don't have to throw these filters away and change them out all the time. Anyway, what you're gonna do with this is you're actually going to just pop your filter inside the canister and it is love bug season. You probably see them flying all over the place, landing on me, this whole, this whole video is gonna be just love bugs everywhere. And you just turn it nice and tight righty tighty you don't have to over tighten it too much but you do want to make sure it is nice and tight they also give you this tool this tool is going to help you to tighten it and loosen it so make it a little tighter and you're going to want to keep this on hand for when it's time to loosen it and change your filter out next up we're going to talk about these two things let's take these plugs out the top green says outlet that's where the water is going to you guessed it come out the bottom is inlet, and that's where the water is going to go in. Though this chiller looks a little bit different, is a little bit smaller than some of the chillers that are similar in the all-in-one chiller space, this is a familiar friend of mine. And when I say friend, I say that with sarcasm. 
It's a great thing to have a pre-filter and that's what this is, it's a pre-filter. Meaning there's nothing in here that's gonna prevent your finger or your hair from getting sucked into that hole. If it happens, it could happen. Just obviously use caution. So there's no pre-filter inside. Or is there? Can I put this inside? Oh my gosh. Eureka! Check this out. All right, so I have always been, um, I've always been a little opinionated when it comes to these all-in-ones because most of the time, this little piece right here actually goes right here. I don't know if it's, is it watching? I gotta get the camera to turn, hold on. Goes right here. Typically, this is how this is set up. You turn that on there in the inlet, and then you take this piece, and it goes over it, and you, ah, and you tighten it down. And then this is where the hose is gonna go. But, I'm going to solve a problem. I don't even know if this is going to work, but I'm going to, I'm going to say it's going to work. So let's go and put this piece on. This goes right here on the inlet and we're not going to put the pre-filter on. However, we're going to take this pre-filter. This is exciting. And we're going to go down here. Let me turn it. All right. Is it seeing it? We're going to take the pre-filter and we're going to actually put it on the inlet inside because it fits. So here's the crazy thing. My son used to get into our Edge Theory Labs tub. Very similar tub, very similar setup, very similar all-in-one chiller. And the, because there's no pre-filter on that hole, he put his finger in it and it sucked his finger in and it didn't suck his finger off or hurt it, but it hurt, it hurt him and scared the crap out of him, scared the crap out of us to the point where we didn't want him to get in there anymore. And it started making us think like our kid's hair could get caught in that hole because it's sucking pretty hard. I don't know if this is gonna be good audio. So I've actually decommissioned my Edge Theory Labs tub and I don't even really use it right now. However, this is something new. Don't even have that option in the other tubs. But putting that pre-filter on the inside inlet down there eliminates all those risks. There you go, there's a hack. You didn't know you were gonna get. Free tip. So now there's another piece. This little piece right here. This is your shut off. And what you're gonna do with this which is cool. You can actually put it down here and connect it to your water outlet. What this is gonna do is allow you to actually shut off the water if you want to move your chiller, change your filter out. It just prevents the water from cycling through, leaving your tub. We're gonna take our tubes and we're going to connect them. So make sure there's your O-ring inside. There's an O-ring inside there. You wanna make sure that it's in there. I actually lost one of them, which is a bummer. So you can take your first tube and set it up down here, connect it to the bottom, which is color coded, water out. This is where the water is going to be sucked out of your tub, going into your chiller. And you're gonna connect this one to the same water inlet where it's red. Same thing, we're gonna take this next tube, got my O-ring there, and then same thing, I'm gonna connect it here to green, green to green, red to red. It's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. So I've got the whole thing set up exactly where I want it, but before I fill it up with water, I just wanna talk about the size inside. So I'm six foot one, I'm a little bit weirdly built. I've actually had somebody call me out and say there's no way you're six foot one because they purchased a cold plunge based on how I fit in it and he didn't fit in it the exact same way. So I apologize if that's ever happened to you. Um, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm just built different you know, as the kids say these days. So I just wanna show you how I will fit inside this thing. So it is padded at the bottom, which is kind of nice. It's kind of soft down there. There's a lot of room. Once again, like it's a taller cold plunge, but there's a lot of room that you have to clear to get inside it. And then once you get inside, it's actually like, this is a different feeling. Typically when I'm sitting in a cold plunge, I can see everything around me, but it's actually, you're, you're pretty low inside here. While it's filling up, this is a really cool time for me to show you a little trick. Okay, so a lot of times on these all-in-one chillers, you'll fill up your tub, you'll plug it in, you'll turn it on, and nothing will happen. And it'll make a bunch of noises and you'll be like, what's going on? I got a broken chiller. Chances are you didn't get a broken chiller. You actually have to purge the air. Basically what that means is we have to force the air out of the line so that the water can do what it's supposed to do. Let me show you how to do that. So we're gonna come down here to the bottom hole. This is where this was, I took it off already. And we're gonna actually take our water 
and force it into the hole. We're gonna do this until water comes out of this hole. So now the water is above that minimum line, meaning I could actually fire this up and go ahead and start the cycle of making my water cold. This is how you do it. So you're gonna go to the back side of your chiller. There's a little hatch back here. This is actually gonna be like a circuit breaker for the chiller. Pop it open, flip it up, listen for the beep. Make sure that everything is open. There is that little latch back there. You wanna make sure it is open so the water can flow. Come over here on the front. There's the power button all the way to the left. And you're gonna hold it down till you hear a beep. And because I purged the water, it's automatically starting immediately. All right, so, all right, so it's making a lot of noise, but I wanna just show you the basic functions. This is the power button. You can press and turn that on or off. S is for set, so you're gonna hold that down. It's currently set at 37 degrees. I just changed it. You can press it one tap, go up to 39, 40 degrees, whatever feels right. We'll set it to 40 degrees. I feel like that's a good setting. And then hit the S button one more time. Now it's set to 40 degrees. Well, now we're full and it's the moment of truth. Let's see how this thing works and let's see how it fit. All right. The padding on the bottom is pretty nice. Oh dear. There's, <laughs> okay. So if you're a taller person, this is absolutely the inflatable cold plunge for you. I'll say, um, once again, I'm six foot one and I'm actually like elevating my butt off the ground to keep my hat out of the water. And there's plenty of room. There's another three to four inches of room in here where I could fill this water up even more. So if you're a taller person, probably a professional basketball player would like one like this because there's a lot of room. I do like the padded bottom. I didn't really know if that would make much of a difference, but you can feel the bottom. You can feel the ground um, with the other inflatables that just have that thin little piece. So not being able to feel the bottom and feeling like it is a little cushioned is a nice touch. It's round, as you could imagine. So like having your back kind of rounding into it is pretty comfortable, doesn't feel bad at all. I do think it's always important to test the head dunk. And I think without question, it's gonna be really easy to do a head dunk in here. Oh yeah, plenty of room in there, plenty of room. There's a few things about, you know, all cold plunges that I could pick apart. And I've been able to review a ton of different cold plunges. So being able to really like figure out which one I like the most or which style I like the most, or, you know, like what material I like the most or what size or what chiller. There's, there's so many different types out there, right? So I want to encourage you, you know, figure out what works best for you, figure out what you're looking for. Um, you know, I, I love being able to share my experiences because I know it's hard for everybody to be able to try out so many different cold plunges. Maybe one day it'll be a little bit more accessible. But for now, if you're interested in purchasing a cold plunge for yourself or building a DIY cold plunge for yourself, check out the other videos on my channel. I think they'll have a video that will answer your questions, maybe help make the decision just a little bit easier. If you wanna buy an energized cold plunge, I will have a link down in the description below. It should offer you a special discount. Feel free to use that. I'll also have links to some of my other cold plunge recommendations and sauna recommendations down in my description below. So make sure that you check all those out. And if you have any questions, pop them down in the comments below. Make sure that you like this video, share it with a friend, subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And more importantly, check out this video next. I think you're gonna like it. YouTube thinks you're gonna like it. So just go ahead and click this right here so you can check it out for yourself. I'll see you on the next video. Have a great day, guys. God bless.